here so we need to discuss the next one which i asked to write this program you uh, know create a parameterized method and you uh, know find out which one is big how many of you completed this task i'm completed sir i have i have done sir okay i have also done sir okay. next one is switch case switch case what is this switch concept so it is similar to nested if else multiple conditions you can write with this switch case the switch statement java is like a if else if ladder or nested if else so basically in the nested if else you have lot of brackets right each condition after next uh, curly bracket start and end again else if condition then so curly bracket and uh, end so this lot of complexity is there in the nested if else to reduce that you can use switch switch also does the same as a nested if else so basically main advantage of switch is to reduce code complexity of the if else if ladder so switch statement comes so switch statement is the alternate of if else if ladder so switch statement executes one block of the statement from multiple blocks of statements based on the condition so only there are multiple blocks same as in nested if else but executes only one condition one block will execute based on the condition so we have a number of choices here we can perform different tasks for each choice so each choice so can execute another block of code so let's see here switch parenthesis you give the your variable or expression what you want to check your condition you can give here then case value one colon colon is mandatory case is the reserved keyword switch is the reserved keyword here the value so your variable value is equal to this one it will compare internally and this code will execute then break it another case value 2 so here code inside the second case will execute break it so then another case like this all the many cases we can write so which case is nothing but a nested if else one uh, condition then that code but here a break keyword is given here break keyword here what it will do is if this case is true and this code will execute then exit this entire switch block cursor will come here if this block will execute and cursor will come for example this case is not true it will go to case 2 if case 2 is true that block will execute it will exit so that's what the break will exit the if that condition is true if the condition is not true it will keep moving to the next block next case next case if all cases are not true the default case default block so default block is nothing but else block in the nested if else so that's a default block means so the rules for this uh, switch statement is so the expression here whatever the switch after you are writing expression right the expression can be a byte short int long enum types string types and other wrapper class types like a byte class uh short class integer class long class you can place a variable or an expression between the this parenthesis either you can place a, an expression or a variable anything you can place it there that's the switch case you can create any number of cases in switch statement any number of cases in switch statement the case value must be literal or constant the case value must be literal or constant the case value type should be a type of expression a case value type should be a type of expression each case should be unique each case should be unique if you create a duplicate case value it will throw compile time error i think everybody knows compile time error 
while writing the code itself, red mark will come. That's a compile time error. If compile time error is there, can you run the program or not? If compile time error is there, you can you run the program or no? No. No, sir. No. You cannot run. If you no, run no error. You cannot run the program. So red marks are there. You cannot run the program. Okay. So each case should be unique. So there is no each case has a break statement. Each case after you should write a break statement. If a break statement is not used in any case, the execution will continue to the next case. So until a break statement is reached, break statement, so mandatorily use after each case. So that if the any case is not true, it won't you know, go into that block. So you have to use that. That's the case uh, advantage, okay? So any questions on that? And uh, if all the cases are not true, default case will be executed. See this, is the right? So your switch variable or expression will validate, evaluate here. If this variable or expression is anything matching with the case one, so if it is matched, so this case one, code will execute. This one code will execute. And break it. Then it will exit the entire switch case. If case one is not matching with this value, it will go to case two. So it will check if it is matched, this code will execute and break it and exit the entire switch block. If it is not matched, it will go to next case. If it is matched, that case will execute. Then it will exit the entire switch. If it is not matched, will go to default case. So default code will execute, then also exit the entire switch block. So that's uh, how it will uh, switch. So between all of them, okay? Okay, so that's the this switch case. And see one program I'm giving. You need to find out, you give the input to the method. Always remember, if you are giving the input to the method means what is that? You have to make a parameterized method, parameterized method. And the given character is vowel or consonant you need to find out. So what are the vowels? So there are 26 letters are there. You can give any letter, but we need That's to check. Consonants. So only vowels are just five only. If you check five, your code will be less lengthy. Otherwise, if you want to check each and every, uh, each and every character, it is not possible. So in order to avoid that, what we can do is, you can check, you can check only vowels, see? So public static void, find care, vowel or consonant, I'm giving input. What is the input you need to give? What type of data you have to give? Character. Yeah. Character. Oh, switch. Switch character. character with a C value. C value is equal to yeah. A. Then what I'm saying, the entered character is a vowel. Break. Case, for example, the entered character is the C value is not equal to A. Then it will go to E. If the entered character is equal to E, so what are the value you are giving here for the method? So if that is equal to E, then this code will execute. So this code will execute. If 
the entire character is not E, it will go to this case I. So, entire character is not I, it will move to O. If O, this block will execute. If not O, it will go to next case, U. So, it will print U. If not U, it will go to default block. So, whatever the other than E, I, O, U, you are entering, it will come to default block. So that will print here. So that's the how you can check whether you entered a vowel or a consonant, you can check like that. So that's how you can check enter character is a vowel or a consonant. Okay. So that's the program. One program you you try this, write a method. Okay. Write a methods. So all your practice methods. Method will do the task for you. Inside that to build the logic, you are using these control structures. If, if, else, and uh, no, nested if, else, and this switch case we can use. So, different, different logics, how the Surinder is writing. You can follow him, how he is implementing, right? So, you can follow that. So, you have to write your own logics. You have to think a little bit and create your own programs. But all you create a methods, different methods. So that will help you to you know, understand the logics. So I'll give you this program. So let's go and write this program and uh, we can see that. So I'll, I'll explain that uh, for this program, you need to prepare a calculator, calculator program. Calculator program you have to so create. So what is calculator? So calculator program, we'll see that. So what is this calculator program is doing out? So basically, you give the two input values from the keyboard. I'm going to give a new concept here. How to input data from keyboard. How to input data from keyboard to your methods. So one way is through in parameterized method. The other way is while running the program, you can give the values also. Parameterized method we have seen. Now I'll show you how you can input the data to your methods, local variables, while running the program, how you can give the data. So that I'll show you now, okay? So I'm going to take uh, two or uh, three variables that I'll give from the keyboard. How can you supply data from keyboard? So we're going to use here scanner class. That scanner class, I'll show you that. So the method we need to write here is, uh, I'll go to our project. This is our project. Let's move on to our project. So conditional statements. I'll create a new method. See all new methods I'm creating. So I'll create a non-static method. Access modifier. Okay, in whole, let, let me create a static method only. Next to programs, I'll create a non-static. Access modifier static void method, method name. So parenthesis, I'm not giving any parameters. I'll give all the input in the keyboard itself, from the keyboard, logic. It's the parameterized, not parameters, void method without parameters I'm creating. So now, so the value is, I'm giving a value here is, access modifier I can give protected, protected, static. So void, the method name is, I'm going to give a method name, calculator program. Meaningful name you have to give, calculator. That's a, my method name. I'm not giving any fee. As it is, I'm following this syntax. That's what the syntax is you need to write. First, you should know. First, you should know what you want to do in the method. First, you have to program yourself what you want to do inside the method body. Then you can proceed step by step. Now, first step is declare two, three variables, total three variables you declare. So declare three local variables. Just to declare only. What is the syntax for declaring uh, local variables? Data type variable. Data type variable name equals to 
Data type. Data type variable name. That's it. Name. I'm not asking assigning. Just, Just pair. Data type variable. So I will take double value. So double n one. Come on, n two. So another one character operators. So what is the mathematical operators? Can you tell me? What is the mathematical operators? Plus the minus. Plus minus multiplication. Plus division. Minus, division. minus multiplication division. These are the mathematical operators, right? Yes. So now characters. One by one is a character. It's not a no string. It's a character. But when you are inputting that, we'll see how we can input that from keyboard. Now, second step. Step two. So to input from the keyboard, to give an input from the keyboard, to give input from the keyboard, use a scanner class from Java dot util package which is this class is available java dot util package and you are using parameterizer constructor so create object for this scanner why i'm creating object this met this class inside lot of reusable methods are there scanner scobj equal to new scanner and you can use you can input the data from keyboard in the beginning classes, I told this. How system dot in. System dot in. System dot in. System dot out will output the data, but system dot in will takes the data. So that's why I'm giving for this scanner object. This is the scanner object. I'm making the constructor is a parameterized constructor. This is a parameterized constructor. So. This is the another package class, right? Another package class, if you use in this package, what you need to do first? You need to import. Import. That's the first step. So this is the java.util package. This class is there, but you are using in your package. What do you need to do? You need to import. Import, import will give a permission to use in this package. So import. Why you need to do import? Everybody got it? Permission. One package classes, interfaces, if you want to use in another package. What package. You, need to do? you need to import. import. First import. <clears throat> then you can use them. See, the error is gone now. That's why import is mandatory. Same package you don't need to do. Other package classes, if you're using here, that's why you're doing import. So why these are in scanner class? See that import. Import Java dot util dot scanner. So this package, this class package is Java dot util. But we are calling in our package. This is our package. This is our package. This package inside you are calling our other package class. That's why you are doing the import. Why you need to do import? When you are calling other packages in some other package, first you have to do import. First you have to do import. All these points are very important. So if you don't know, note down and read them, practice them. Okay. I need to give this N1 value, N2 value, and operator value. From keyboard. While running the program itself, I'll give that. But so we need to, to code it, right? So let's let's enter the data. So enter n1 value. Okay, it will take the n1 value, n1 equal to you already declared. Now you need to use the variable name. Again, you don't need to declare. Already declaration is done here. You declared n1 variable. Now you need to give the value, assigning the value now. So why are you assigning the value means which operator I'm using? Equals to. 
assignment operator equal to assignment operator assignment operator we are using n1 equal to and scobz dot next double if you want a double data this n1 is of type double data see the return type method next double is a return type method you practice same with the next int method you practice with other methods so create same kind of program now i took the n1 n2 double right you take integer then you call next int method practice so that it will be you will get a confidence all the methods okay next double so n1 value we have assigned now second n2 value enter n2 value enter n2 value so now you need to assign n2 value n2 equal to same object reference dot that class method you are calling how to call one class non static methods return type non static methods so data type of the method you already declared a data type here the n1 value you are giving n1 value equal to assigning the value so next double this is the one how you can assign haripriya neela are you getting any doubt here rashida chandni no sir no sir no, so sir. how to declare a variable and how to call that variable and assigning the value here you are assigning the value with this method so this method will take the data whatever you are giving in the keyboard that will store in the n1 and same n2 value also now second time you will enter the data right that data yes. will go and store in the n2 yes. now i need to assign the operator value right i need to up operator value so enter operator value so plus or minus or multiplication or division okay so this is the only things you need to enter now see that so operator already you dictated the data type again you don't need to declare operator only variable name you call operator equal to what is the operator data type what is the operator data type Car, 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 but from that group of characters you need to get the first character so how can you get the character from the string to get the character from the string you have to use a char at method what is the method you need to use char at right. first character that is zero zero index so let me give you in detail here So string class provides. Let me give you in detailed description here about caret method. This is giving a you are entering this sc sc obj dot next method will give you string to you. That string dot you are calling caret method. Caret method returns a character data. That's why that way I am giving character. I am storing in the operator variable. Now, first two, what it will do? String class. So, for example, let me use string s equal to Java. Just take a simple example. So, the indexes are here. The index is zero, one, two, three. These are the indexes. So, the first zero index. What is the character is there? J. J. And the one index. What is the character? 
ಕ್ಯಾರೆಕ್ಟರ್ so character data it returns right character c1 equal to s dot string dot char at of what is the j j index 0 0 0 so give 0 if you want to be what is the one i need to give a 2 2 so index uh, index number if you want to be b character Two, ಆಲ್ಸೋ whatever you enter from the keyboard that is a string from that string you are getting the first character suppose you give a plus that will take as a string so plus the first character is a plus only the plus will go and store in the operator okay if you give minus minus a string that first character is zero so minus minus first character is a string Yes. it is string string dot caret means the minus, minus will give you here it will store here to give you multiplication that first character means multiplication operator only that you will get here so that's a caret method what it will do in the given string the first character zero if i give first character it will fetch and store in the operator variable now i got the so n1 value i got the n2 value i got the operator now i need to prepare the calculator see so declare output value because i am doing operation right n1 plus n2 n1 minus n2 n1 multiplied by n2 i'll do that output i need to store right so that output i am going to declare here so what is the output you will get a double only you will get so output if i do operation between double data i'll get a double only so i am declaring now switch now i am starting switch switch the operator if operator is equal to any of this what is this o p r a t o r operator okay correct so the switch block is starting switch block is started okay now first case what is the first case plus operator plus if the operator is equal to plus what you need to do output, output. equal to n1 plus n2 then break it then case what is the no next minus one? subtraction so you need what is the output n1 minus n2 n1 minus n2 Break. all this is the small small things i am doing is so we are not doing very complex also if it is multiplication multiplication output so output equal to n1 into n2 n1 multiplied by n2 break it case what is the so division operator yes. so output equal to n1 equal to n1 by divided by n2 so break it so then default default so if all are not true it will go and you can say entered invalid operation operation valid operator invalid operator invalid so values whatever it is 
Okay, that's what you want to see. After the, I need to print the output. This output I need to print. Now you it will calculate. For example, you entered a plus. The output you will get, right? This value I need to print. How can you print? So I'll do that. N1 plus so operator. Operator value I'm going to give. Operator. Let's say N2. So we can give. So you can output. But why it is throwing error? Local variable output may not have been initialized. Hmm, what is the solution for this? Read, read properly that. So where it is throwing error, see error is throwing for output. output. Read. But they, you did assign a value. Assign. Initial read value. That, read that variable. carefully. Everybody read that. The local In variable, local variable output, output may not have been initialized. Been initialized. What is mean by initialization means? Story. It's not huh? Story. Huh? What is and mean by uh, may not be initialized? Didn't declare any... We didn't assign the value. See, we hmm. not been initialized means you didn't assign any value. So that you have to assign with a 0, 0.0. So then the error is gone. So that are local variables, you must initialize with a value. Make a note that local variable value, if you want to use. You must initialize, then only you can use it. Otherwise, you cannot use it. So block outside, if you want to use, you must initialize with the initial value, that is a zero or one. Later, it will replace. For example, this value has come. So this zero will replace with this value. So if it is this one, and this value will replace that one. Only that out latest value will come. But initially, you give 0, 0.0. If you don't know any initial value, we give it. So Sir, can you tell the notes one, uh, one more time? Local. Local variable value must be initialized before using it. Local variable value, variable, local variable must be initialized before using it. Local variable value must be initialized before using it. So local variable must be initialized before using it. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Now, Let's move. Now, program is ready. Now call this. Call this calculator program. So static method, I can call the static method directly. So execute it. See, while running the program, it will ask, please enter N1 value. See, enter N1 value, still in the running mode. Can you see here? Red mark means it is in running mode. It's not moving. Your input is important here. So enter n value six. Enter operator value plus. So what is the output you got? See? Yes. See now the this red mark is gone because you entered press enter key after entering the plus enter key. The program execution is over. So run again one more time. So we have to enter here? Yeah, here in the console. You have to enter here. Can you see here? Yes, sir. So here yes, you need yes. to enter. Okay. So after entering the seven, press enter key, okay? Okay. You have to enter, press enter key. Then eight. Mm -hmm. Plus. Then minus. Plus. I'll do a different one, okay? Multiplication. See? 7, 8, J. 
56. Again you run, again you run. So any times you can run, you can run anything. After entering operator also, press enter key. See now you got the output. So this is the how you can so play around with this. How to how you are inputting? Who is doing that? The scanner object. In scanner object, scanner class methods, X double. You do the same program. Instead of double, you take integer. You take an integer. Remaining code everything the same, but here this method will change. What is the method you have to use here? Next, next int. Next int method you have to use. That's it. So that you can play around. Remaining all same. This next method is common for the string. This you don't need to change. But here you will declare int is it. Here also you will declare int output. Okay. So that's the program we have to do. So that's all about first today's program and all the control structures are done. No.